Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green enchantment modified deck featuring a ton of cards from recent expansions. In fact, outside of a few lands in our mana base between Den of the Bugbear and the red-green pathway, the entire deck is rotation-proof, so it will stay in standard for a long time to come. And at the center of the deck we've got some of our enchantment payoff cards, like Kami of Transients picking up plus one plus one counters whenever we cast an enchantment, and then a generous visitor can also distribute plus one counters among any of our creatures, very synergistic with cards like the partners, which can then pick up more counters and in turn distribute more counters on the rest of our team, giving those haste as well. We've got Thundering Raichu coming in with haste, also dealing damage equal to the number of modified creatures we control, so that can be a nice finisher in this type of deck. And at 3 mana we've got some of our key sagas with Fable of the Mirror Breaker, making a Goblin Shaman that can make treasures when it attacks. Chapter 2 lets us improve our hand, can maybe even discard a Kami of Transients and then later get it back out of the graveyard for free. And eventually the Reflection of Kiki Jiki can also set up some neat synergies throughout the deck. Can maybe even give our Reflection haste right away thanks to our Invigorating Hot Spring, giving a modified creatures we control haste, and we get 4 counters to potentially distribute over the course of a few turns. And sometimes we don't even need to use Spring to get haste on a creature. Let's say we play a Kami, play an enchantment, it picks up a counter and now it also has haste, so the Hot Spring can do a lot of work here. And then we also have Jugan Defense the Temple, making a Monk token to make more mana, distributes 2 plus 1 counters on Chapter 2, and eventually transforms into Remnant of the Rising Star, a great mana sink, and can provide more plus 1 counters, can even potentially control enough modified creatures to give the Rising Star plus 5 plus 5 and Trample, which is usually enough to end the game on the spot. And then we've got a few more synergies here with our Weaver of Harmony pumping all our enchantment creatures. Those also include some of our sagas that eventually turn into creatures like Kumano that eventually transforms into etching. Kumano also potentially providing a plus one counter to enable those modified synergies. And we can also activate the Weaver to potentially double up on one of our triggers. Let's say we have a Fable, we can maybe loot twice with a second chapter. Or even if we activate our Reflection of Kiki Jiki and then activate Weaver, we can double up on the copy ability and maybe copy two creatures, can even set up a fun chain of copying Weaver to make more Weavers to copy the ability over and over again, and if we do that in the opponent's end step we can untap and attack with an army of Weavers that are pumping each other, so that's a fun little addition as well. And then we've got a bit of removal with a full set of Play With Fire, could potentially play Voltage Surge as well to deal 4 damage even though it cannot go face because we do have the treasures to maybe sacrifice and deal 4 damage. And then Kami's Flare can deal 3 to a creature or Planeswalker as well as 2 more if we control a modified creature, which should not be an issue. And then a Fang is also sort of a removal spell as a 1-1 with Death Touch can handle larger creatures that our burn spells can no longer kill, so it can be very nice in some matchups, and also just an enchantment creature to enable some of our other synergies. And then as I mentioned, the mana base for now is still running Den of the Bugbear, as a great creature land hopefully will be replaced with other creature lands in the future, and then the channel lands can also come in handy, making 1-1 tokens or blowing up artifacts or enchantments. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand needs a few extra lands, but uh, if we get Defensive Temple down, it can help us cast some of our four drops, especially if we draw a mountain. And for now, play Kumano. Don't have a two mana play lined up, so can play with fire whatever two drop they play next turn. Black Whites and Clerics. Okay, second partner is a bit much. Probably gonna end up killing the cleric here in a second. It's gonna be a Lunark veteran. Okay, take out cleric. And an aspirant, fair enough. So we can play defense the temple now with a few creatures in play to receive the plus one counters next turn. Happy to trade for Aspirants. And yeah, next turn partners is also going to be quite exciting. Would have been even better to get partners in play before distributing the counters, but this is how it's going to be. 
Is your opponent on a Cleric Synergy deck? Attacks for four. And we get to untap. One counter each. And then I don't mind partners. Also dodges a Vanishing Verse as opposed to Raiju. And then what creature do we pump? Probably the 2-2 two -two here. And there's a Vanishing Verse as we suspected. Hit for 3. And the race is on. Raiju can also put a counter on partners, so it distributes more counters itself. Ooh, but an Angel of Destiny? That's an interesting twist. So we'll take three. Play with fire could come in handy. So we can play Raiju. Now it's going to be a little suspicious if we don't pay the one for remnants to keep up play with fire. Then Raiju can attack after getting two more counters from the partners. I guess we could just attack as a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, maybe we do just pay the one from remnants. And then partners targets Raiju. And Raiju puts counter on partners. So the next turn it can grow even more. And our opponent's gonna double block so we get to take out Angel. Fair enough. Can maybe animate our creature lands next turn. Opponent's down to one card in hand. And another play with fire, looking good as well. So what's our plan? I'm thinking double play with fire is going to be put to good use. We can use partners to put three counters on probably the etching and just attack with the team and see if there's any double blocks being lined up. And if not, I can double play with fire the aspirants. Does partners want attack if they, let's say, triple block what happens? Yeah, that's probably still fine, actually. Can double play with Fire Aspirants and take out the Cleric. Opponent takes the damage, so this is 11. Not quite enough for lethal here with double play with Fire. So I think we kill Aspirant now. And pass a turn. Also gets exiled by etching, in case they have any graveyard recursion. Just an attack for five. Do we see a board wipe, maybe? A meat hook massacre. Does not kill our etching, at least. And now then might be enough for lethal. Alright, sweet. So interesting game here against black-white clerics. But Red Green got the upper hand this time. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems acceptable. Kami into Fable. Facing Red Black. We're fine if Kami gets answered here, as we can likely get it back later. And then we'll play this on the red, so we have double red for Raiju. Opponent lets the Kami slide. Grixis. Okay, so might as well play Fable now. Could also go Kumano plus Weaver if we want a double spell here instead. If we're afraid of a counter spell, for instance, would pump Kami twice. Although I think I prefer getting Fable going. Makes it more likely that we can play Raichu next turn as well. And we may not need double Kami's Flare. Opponent's got the Voltage Surge for Kami, but Fable resolves. Don't expect my Shaman to survive, necessarily. Iteration for card advantage. Okay. Opponent found a land, so now we'll have to decide what to discard. Hot Spring could be useful. Probably at least one Kami's Flare, if not both. And then maybe Kumano is a bit low impact now. 
Hope to draw land, although if I draw land I can ride you plus Kumano, which is quite efficient. I'm tempted to just get rid of both Kami's Flares in this type of matchup. Keep all the threats. Oh, replaced by double play with fire. So not ideal. What does that mean for us? Play Weaver and Kumano, but we can attack first. Get to make a treasure. I did consider replacing Play With Fire with Voltage Surge, since we do have some treasures to sacrifice. We'll see which one ends up being better here. Going face is not irrelevant. Alright, so next turn Raichu will come into play with an extra counter at least. Can use our treasure token. Goldspan Dragon is scary. Opponent's not abiding by the rotation rules yet. Okay. Well, I think it's time for Raiju here. And then... Can attack with all. Although Infernal Grasp can answer Raiju, sadly. That happens. Hit for four. Now we could double play with Fire Goldspan Dragon. Not sure if that's quite worth it, as there may be a sweeper imminent anyway. So we'll take four. And it's going to be a Mito Massacre for three. Okay, can I finish off Goldspan at least? So we need to rebuild, and we don't have a whole lot of cards left. But at least Kami comes back. And we can give it haste with a hot spring. The counter already gives it haste, but we can distribute an extra counter. It's going to be a fading hope to bounce. Tank for three. And another Goldspan Dragon. Yeah, Voltage Surge might have been better in this matchup. As we're down to seven, opponent is down to one card at least. And we can make some hasty creatures here. So, Kami into Weaver. Give Weaver haste. And we can play with Fire. So that might be lethal. Alright, I take it back. Play with fire is the best. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Visitor into maybe Kami before we start playing out our enchantments with a bit of cheap interaction at the ready. Turn one initiates. Yeah, so if our opponent has the Boros aggro deck and plays a 2-2 with haste, we might regret not keeping up play with fire or playing fang to block at least. So I think I do keep up play with fire here. Also if they play an aspirant we can kill it before it triggers. And killing initiate is probably fine long term if they don't present anything else. It's gonna be an aspirant so play with fire as soon as possible. Could play Kami or maybe Visitor keep a play with fire and then next turn we can play Kami into Fang if we'd like and wait on Defense the Temple for an extra turn. Feels alright. They could also play a Brutal Cathar which we can take out here. It's gonna be Cavalier so we want to kill the Initiates before it picks up an extra counter. 
And then Fang can block at some point as well. Hot Spring could be nice. So do we want to make a 4-4 Kami? Probably not necessary, since Brutal Cathar already lines up quite well against it. So we'll just bump Visitor. And then tank for two. I'm fine trading either of these for Cavalier, if they manage to remove one of them. It's gonna be Brutal Cathar, Exile's Kami. And Cavalier attacks, so we'll trade. And initiate the leftover. Okay, so we can play Hot Spring or defense the temple at this point, make a 3-3 visitor, and chill for a turn. Don't want them training and getting counters to destroy our enchantments. Hopefully no Raiju. Royal Eruption's good too, so now they do get to train and we miss out on a plus one counter. So that was not what we wanted to see at all. Should have actually put a stop here, so I could have animated my den to put an extra counter on it. And we could have used a monk for mana, so we missed out on that. But now I could play a hot spring and then make a 3-3 on defense. And I imagine we'll play this out as we'll be able to activate den in the future. Opponent's got thrown then. Cathar's gonna transform into a 3 3 first strike. Okay, so we've got our remnants, can give it haste if we want. Is that a play? Or we can play Kumano, get that going. So we don't have any good attack with Den, even if we put a counter on it. But I can put a counter on my monk. And then I probably should cast Kumano, otherwise we might get into a spot where we cast two spells in the same turn and this transforms back, which we probably want to avoid. And then we'll make a 4-4. Four, four. And our opponent could maybe attack and then use the initiate's counters to take out an enchantment here. But we'll see if that's the case. If they draw another Brutal Cathar, it's going to be the Knight side. Alright, just a Den attacking, that's fine. So we probably want to... Hmm, do we take out Initiates? Could also animate a Den, but then our 4-4 four four doesn't get to block. So we have quite a few options. If we block Brute, we get our Kami back. And then maybe it's fine to trade a Remnant for Den. Take 4 and leave the Initiate around. Yeah, I don't hate that idea since we don't know for a fact if we're drawing creatures to make use of Remnant. So let's move to blocks. Trade here, eat the Brutes. And then we don't have any super valuable enchantments left that the Initiate can blow up. Fall to 6. Have a 2-2 two -two back. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. No green mana means mulligan. This one we can try and keep. And then what to put on the bottom? Probably a play with fire. And then fang into Kami's flare. Although now I'm liking visitor first. That way we can play fang, get an extra counter if we don't need to kill anything. Put on red black, maybe mid range. Falky gonna have a look. So they can take the Fang, and that's going to force us to Kami's Flare next turn. Or they can go for Raiju, but then we don't need to answer Valky right away. Alright, let's play Fang, I think. Counter on Visitor. And next turn we can play Fable. Not really interested in trading here. Opponents making us discard here. 
can go after Fable. And a Kami the draw. So we probably want to kill Valky before they can turn it into a Raichu and then attack, make it a 4-4. Although I guess I could keep Fang back to block. Killing Valky just enables us to maybe get our Raichu in play next turn, which is probably worth it. Yeah, I mean, we could wait in case they have another Valky, but we get to attack for a bunch if we do this, which is probably worthwhile. Thirst on the Visitor. And their own Fable. Okay, luckily get to play Raichu. And should probably put the counter on itself. As a Fang already trades for the Shaman, and they could have some 3 damage removal. Opponent trades. It's gonna be an Eye Twitch to jump. And a Trespasser. Alright, so the Raiju still has a good attack here. Although next turn, if they can maybe keep the Eye Twitch around, a Reflection could be annoying. For now, we have to attack and put counter on the Raiju. Probably actually should have gone Kami into Fang, so that Raiju's ability dealt one more damage. Although now we give them slightly less information to work with. Eye Twitch jumps. So that's out of the way. And it grabs Sciences. Alright, so we kind of missed out on one damage here. We'll see if it ends up mattering. Happy to trade Fang for Trespasser. Problem with, I guess, playing these first is opponent maybe hangs on to Eye Twitch to trade for Fang. Ooh, Harvester plus Reflection is something we don't want to face. So we need to find an answer to those. Well, there we go. So how about we attack with a team, counter on Kami. And then we're most likely gonna kill either Reflection or Harvester. But we can wait for them to maybe double block. Bone's gonna take it, so this is 10 damage. Can put him to 1 with a Kami's Flare. And I'm just gonna go after the Reflection instead of Harvester. Scarier of the two. Your opponent could gain some life with Trespasser. An untapped land also animates Den for us. And as soon as we turn Raiju sideways, it can uh, burn out the opponent. It's gonna be an adversary with Kicker. Getting back Blood Chief's Thirst, perhaps. Although they won't be able to take out Raiju. I guess if they can kill Kami and Fang. Using Harvester, then um, Raiju doesn't necessarily deal any damage, plus Trespasser can also gain some life. So the game's not over yet. Opponent lets us untap, so now we get to activate Den and turn the team sideways. Counter on probably Fang, since this trades anyway. And yeah, opponent concedes, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand definitely needs a third land. But I um, think it's still a keep overall. Got an early play with fire, and being on the play means we can maybe snowball our fable. Alright, there we go. Up against a control deck, however, so... Not sure if fable's gonna necessarily connect. Ooh, what is this? Excavated wall. So maybe some artifact synergies coming up. Can't 
can maybe finish off the wall with a play with fire next turn after playing Raichu and attacking. And a portable hole, nice answer to our shaman. And Bangbuster. Okay. So, what to discard, if anything? Probably one land can go. And then Raiju attack. Seems okay. Could see a Tesseret in our future. Turn the wall into an actual creature. It's gonna be a restoration for now. Finding a planes. So currently no answer for the Raiju. Now we don't necessarily want to overextend into a potential sweeper. So we could attack with Den, put a counter on it with a Raiju. And hope there's no march to exile or Den for one mana. Kind of like that idea. And then now we've got a powered up den in the future as well. Okay, Pun is not jumping yet with the wall, so they've got other plans for it. Mills over Treasure Vault also points towards those artifact synergies. And our opponent's already at 7. Genius Smith, good synergy as well. Enters tapped, so it's not gonna block here. Find Celestus. Which they'll play. And a Circuit Mender. Got double play with fire. Opponent at a virtual 5 life. Raichu can attack and be copied. So that might just be game here. So let's see. Can even animate my Den if I'd like. Or we can just copy Raichu, attack with all, spread around some counters, so Raichu deals 2 plus 2, perhaps. Alright, and our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, I had to do some math here. Raichu triggers are also kind of complicated, especially if multiple copies are involved. But it uh, feels like we would have had some way to kill the opponent here, even through a couple blockers. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has potential. We've got turn 1 Kumano, turn 2 play Fang with an extra counter. And then Hot Spring can give our future creatures haste as well. Put on green-white with a visitor, so probably a runes deck. Well, at least our Fang can hold off a large Runeforge champion, for instance. And Kumano is also not bad in the mirror match, potentially exiling opposing spirits that would otherwise come back. Uh, yeah, there's the Kami. So we have options. I'm not hating Hot Spring to set up a hasty Shaman token in case of removal. Opponents, yeah, I guess they are playing red as well, that are less likely to have removal for my Shaman token. I guess if we add a counter now with Hot Spring, we can grow the etching or the Fang. I guess it would probably be Fang. Alright, let's try this. Button takes it. And next turn we could attack with our Shaman, plus maybe play something afterwards. There's a Naturalist. And potentially another enchantment here. A Rune of Might on the Visitor. Okay, so better off with Death Touch on Fang than some Burn Spells at this point. But now my token wouldn't be able to attack as a 3-3, so instead we can defend the Temple. And then if I give the token haste I can play let's say a visitor as well, to set up playing a bunch of enchantments next turn. I guess it works.
And no attacks, I don't think. Unless we want to trade Fang for any of the opponent's creatures. Although we might need to keep it back, especially if the opponent starts getting a big life linker. They want to try and raise them. So opponent's missing their Runeforge champion to completely go off. We can start thinking about where to put our counters from Defense the Temple. Kami attacks. Yeah, I could trade for Fang and get it exiled thanks to etching. Maybe they've got uh, Iganjo, yeah. Alright, at least that's their entire turn gone, so don't feel too bad about it. And then counters on etching and... At this point, maybe the token, since we don't need it for mana anymore. And then we can play Fable. And then once we play Fang, we can put an extra counter on our uh, Shaman token, so that can attack. And then I guess our 3-3 will stay back. So just these two attacking. Opponent takes it. Next turn we can give a Remnant haste as well. And we're pretty close to having enough modified creatures to get to plus 5, plus 5 and trample bonus. Showdown to refuel. Let's see if that's good enough here. They found a bunch of lands and another naturalist. And they're just gonna play it. Okay. Now we can do some interesting things with our uh, reflection of Kiki Jiki as well once we get it. But that's gonna take a while. Can also maybe use the hot spring to give our uh, reflection of Kiki Jiki haste so we can use it right away. Not sure if that's gonna come up. Opponent passes, another fable the draw. So. Do we want to discard it? It is an enchantment, so it provides an extra counter. So it may be good enough here. So let's say we play Fable, put counter on Remnant, so that gains haste. Then we control how many modified creatures. Can pay one to put a counter there as well, or even two, or three. And yeah, a Remnant already gets the plus 5 bonus, has haste thanks to Hot Spring and can attack for the win. Alright, sweet, so we managed to take down the Naya Rune stack, which can be quite scary to face, especially once they get their creatures above burn range, and uh, we just have to rely on our Death Touch creatures to play defense, which definitely did some good work here in this game. So yeah, overall quite happy with how this red-green enchantment deck turned out, and as I've mentioned in the introduction, it's pretty much rotation-proof outside of a few lands in the mana base, but not much we can do about those at the moment. So most of the core of the deck is Kamigawa, with a few Innistrad cards as well to spice it up. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.